IMS this year uh, have been um, asked to talk about uh, neuropathy in MGAS. This is a very uh, challenging topic uh, for many different reasons. Uh, number one, um, the, the fact that somebody has an MGAS uh, by definition should be somebody who's asymptomatic. However, now more and more we're realizing that these MGAS conditions, uh, they are benign, yes, but they can also cause some problems and some symptoms. Now, neuropathic or neurologic MGAS is one of those subtypes. And in my practice, I would say about 20% of the patients uh, that I see have some type of neuropathy. Neuropathy implies the damage of the nerve endings. And we believe that in most of these cases, the MGAS in some way has something to do with the symptoms. Now, uh, obviously the challenging part is, uh, number one, understanding really what is the relation between the uh, MGAS and the neuropathy itself. Uh, number two, how severe the neuropathy is. Uh, then comes to decide when is the right time to treat. Do I wanna treat too early when the neuropathy is very mild and really not affecting the patients? Or uh, do I wait until the neuropathy becomes uh, more problematic to the patient, but also maybe has become irreversible? So either we treat too early or we treat too late. We don't know when the right time to treat is. Another problem, as you can understand, is how do we treat them? You know, uh, are there any treatments that are better than other treatments? The literature dedicated to clinical trials and, ter and therapies for patients with neuropathy and MGAS are actually very limited. Uh, we have very few uh, randomized studies or prospective studies looking at interventions on these patients. So a lot of the decisions that we make are basically focused on decreasing the IgM levels or, or affecting the, the Waldenstrom's uh, production. Uh, but, but we do not really know exactly what is the best treatment option for these patients. Next uh, comes how do we measure the response? Right, so as we treat these patients, uh, sometimes the, the paraprotein levels do decrease and that implies that you know, the, the patient is responding. But then how long is it gonna take for the symptoms to improve? Typically it takes months to years sometimes for the symptoms to improve. So it's kind of making an investment, uh, but not for a short term. You, know, you will see the, the return to your investment years later and that might or might not happen. So the patients need to be aware of that. So as you can see, there's a number of different unmet needs specifically in this population that I'm, tr I'm gonna try to address with my uh, colleague, Andrew Brannigan from uh, the Massachusetts General Hospital between the two when I lead a discussion on how, to, how we can best diagnose these patients, assess the relationship, uh, define a better treatment initiation time, the treatment uh, options, how we measure the response, how do we then retreat these patients? So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, things that need to be understood a little bit better. And uh, everything that we take so far that we do for these patients is based on our clinical experience, clinical judgment, but not precisely based on, on prospective research, which I think is uh, necessary um, for, in this type of, for this type of patients.